Hi everyone. Um, I mentioned to a um, few people recently that um, I've managed to salvage uh, two copies of Shortwave magazine um, from many years ago and uh, one dates from 1988 which is the cover of the magazine you're looking at now and I have another from 10 years later um, and it's a coincidence that the one that uh, survives this is the oldest one um, I bought it when I bought the Sanjin ATS 803 um, now both ended up in the garden shed uh, and the magazine seems to have survived in slightly better condition than the radio, although the radio now works and as you know I've taken it out on the expeditions, although not recently. Um, both spent probably 20 years um, in the garden shed, give or take. So the magazine is actually June 1988, so 28 years old, nearly, getting on for. Um, and I wasn't actually 100% sure if I still had it or not. I literally had to pull everything out of the shed. Um, and a box right at the bottom, near the back, um, was this magazine and, um, and the other one from 1998. Uh, and so I thought it'd be really interesting to have a look through. Um, and this is obviously more interesting perhaps than the later edition because this is actually... I guess at the end of the golden era, era of shortwave radio, um, you know, this is before the wall came down, so this is kind of the end, towards the end of the, well, the first Cold War, some are arguing that another one started, but um, but, it, but it's in, it's really interesting, particularly um, so, uh, the, some, some of the articles, technical articles, um, and the advertisements actually for some of the radios that were around at the time. Um, so uh, so I, what I'm going to do is just fairly briefly flick through the magazine um, uh, and I hope it's uh, interesting to you. So let me just get the radio out of the way. Um, so this is the uh, front cover um, and it appears that uh, there's a what they call a circuit graph easy wire build our weather satellite antenna um what receiver question mark so um there's an article on basically a, a way to um wire up circuit boards without using solder i'm not sure if it ever caught on because i don't think i've ever seen it other than in this magazine so um first page a big advertisement from icon for the r7000 which they describe as a commercial quality scanning receiver in the ic r71e that funnily enough those aren't two radios that I particularly remember. Um, when I bought this magazine, um, what I actually wanted was the 2001D, but I couldn't afford it. Um, so I bought the Sanjin instead. It was about a third of the price. Uh, so um, it's just, for me, interesting, because I've obviously read this magazine more than once, but um, that was many years ago, and I don't even remember those two particular radios. So we have the first article, a word in Edgeway. So this is basically where readers are writing in for advice. And um, it's interesting, actually, there's someone wrote in um, saying that, they, that yesterday they bought a Matsui MR4099 receiver from their local Curry shop. Now, that's basically a Curry's branded version of the ATS 803A. Um, and the... Six ever ready silver seal batteries um, wouldn't fit properly, or at least if you if they fitted them, they'd be they're so tight they could never actually remove them. Um, and apparently, there was a review in the September edition of this magazine. This is June, so uh, the previous September, um, where this magazine suggests that batteries had the possibility of leaking and swelling inside the battery compartment and it causing issues so so there's a battery issue um with the Mac, with, with the uh, with that radio and then there's another article actually this time about the sanjin ats803 um, someone purchased it in singapore it's still under warranty um it's developed a problem um and they couldn't find anyone to undertake a repair so um interesting that 
the radio that I purchased that kind of um, catalyzed me buying this magazine in the first place. That on the second page, there's two issues <laughs> with the same radio, so uh, that was interesting. On the other, on this, on this page here, it's what's new: Volvo launch RDS car radio. So um, I had no idea actually that RDS had been around that long. But um, so back in 1988, Volvo. Uh, we're planning to at least launch um, an RDS car radio, so uh, interesting. Um, what's new? So some information on um, ham activity. Uh, Johnson's shortwave were reintroducing some different radios, the latest ones to appear in their shop with a Philips D2999. Uh, which they describe as an all-electronic digital world receiver with coverage from 150 kilohertz to 29.99 megahertz, um, FM, um, amongst others. Uh, you kind of forget, really, that companies like Philips actually used to make shortwave radios, um, but they did. Um, what else have we got? There's some information on some rallies that were taking place at the time. Um, there's an article on engineering information from the BBC, so engineering work that would, might be affecting TV channels uh, and some FM radio stations, actually. Right, then there's a whole page that they call Grassroots, um, and this is basically just local radio ham and sh shortwave listening activity. So um, back in the day, there was quite a lot going on to report on a monthly basis. Um, and then on the next page, there's a review of the Revco RS3000 scanner, which, uh, never heard of it. Um, don't remember reading about it when I read this magazine. Um, and then we have an advertisement from Lowe Electronics, who I do remember back in the day. Um, the AR2002, which is, is without doubt the best known and best performing VHF, UHF, Scanner, £487. Wow, that was a lot of money back then. I guess that must be the best part of the more than a £1,000 today. Um, so, yeah, they've got a few advertisements, um, all basically scanners, which I know nothing about. Um, then there's an article, 45 Years of Listening, um, which is about... An X RAF, well, an X RAF bomb aimer. Um, so, basically, an article about a guy who, for many years, um, was a wireless operator as well. Um, which, to be honest with you, I didn't pay much attention to. Um, and then this article continues for another two pages. And then an article on the easy wire. So this is this uh, method of <laughs> wiring up circuit boards without using solder, which uh, I don't know if it ever took on or not. I've never seen it since, so um, I have no idea how popular that became. Right, so then there's an introduction to DXTV, something which you know a lot of people are into now. Um, you see quite a few uh, DXTV videos on YouTube. Um, I don't know whether this was new back in the late 80s, but um, there's a quite a big article here um, on DXTV, um, how it's possible to receive television signals over extreme distances, double hops, uh, sporadic E propagation. That's what's usually responsible for reception of stations from the Middle East, um, et cetera, et cetera. Transatlantic DXTV um, reception. Of course, this is all analog, recognizing 525 line signals particular types of antenna. I mean, this antenna here looks like the TV aerial that we had in my house when I was a kid, but uh, there you go. Um, then, okay, so then there's an advertisement here, Raycom Communications, who um, I do remember, um, have an advert here for the ICF 2001D, £349. It's a lot of money. Um, that was a lot of, that's quite a lot of money now. I mean, it was, again, must have been the equivalent of around about a thousand pounds today. Um, the Air 7, 
which was a kind of scanning radio, but also covered the shortwave broadcast band, um, or, or some of it, uh, which radio that I always liked. The SW1, the tiny SW1, the sort of forerunner to the SW100. Um, that's £249. I can't even read it. It's so small. Yeah, £249. So £250 back in 1988. Great little radio, fantastic. Um, still see them on eBay today. In fact, they still sometimes turn up on eBay. Um, it, brand new. Um, but obviously, there's the issue in replacing the um, electrolytic capacitors. Um, but uh, yeah, great little radio. One, another a Sony radio, actually, that I've kind of always wanted to own, but never have. Um, and then one that I do remember really well is the ICF 7600DS, which kind of had an analog tuning scale. Um, and I remember it being looking well. It looked like a really nice radio. It looked, you know, as if it was really well designed. But I know subsequently that the performance of that radio wasn't great. Um, so it was kind of a victory of design, really, over performance, um, which is a shame because I remember as a teenager um, looking at that radio in, in sort of shop windows and what have you, thinking, "Wow, that's really nice." But I don't think it ever performed particularly well. Um, SW Dayton Electronics, automatic notch filter, advertisement, some more information on introduction to DXTV. I think, yeah, this guy Godfrey Manning um, had a regular article on airband. Um, and in this column, they look at uh, frequency changes and flight plans. Something I actually used to do um, where I grew up in Oxford, we were close to a small airport and um, when I was at school we used to sit up on the sort of third floor with an airband radio and listen to the uh, aircraft as they were sort of coming into land. Not really something I've been into since. Um, some more advertisements, World Radio uh, TMR 7602, also known as the Realistic DX440, Sanjin ATS803, so again, um, 99.99, so that's basically the same radio again, that's an advert for it. Um, and then uh, Bandscan, which is basically news from uh, shortwave, uh, satellite, uh, military communications, um, basically kind of like a just a general roundup of, of radio news. And then an article on Shuttle. Uh, and the NOAA 11. So well, this takes me back. I can still remember the first kind of shuttle flight um, in 79 when, um, not the flight, when they actually, the first sort of glide back to Earth. Some, an article on weather satellite reception, some more advertisements, Dressler communications, who I remember really well, the ASU FRG 9600, £475, ICOM R71, £825, Sony 2001D, 325 and the 7600DS at £169. So, uh, yeah, still a lot of money back in the day. And then an article on scanning, scanning adverts from Nevada. And then seen and heard, so this is the Amateur Bands Roundup, so people write in with reception reports, and so they have an article, seen and heard, Amateur Bands. Um, and then with uh, Decode, um, satellite information, Band 2 DX, basically. More adverts again. Uh, television DX. So some black and white pictures of uh, various stations that have been received from Norway, USSR, Finland. Um, long, medium and short. So this is basically um, where people have written in um, and basically presented reception reports. So there's a table here for long wave back in the day from 153 to 272. Moscow, 263 kilohertz. Kaulenberg, uh, 245 kilohertz. These all take me back. Leningrad 198, uh, which you'd never hear because that's right on top of Radio 4, underneath Radio 4. Um, and then there's a table for medium wave with all the various um, correspondence written in with reception reports from 585 kilohertz Radio Solway through 
to 1602 Kent. In fact, this table here is actually local Radio DX, so that's interesting. Um, and then in this edition, for shortwave, they've actually got a table for the tropical bands. So starting at 2.3, 1 megahertz, up, taking it up to basically 5.1 megahertz. And here we go, 2310 Alice Springs, 2325 Tennant Creek, um, Cath ABC Catherine, 2485. So some of this stuff's still around, but most of it's not. Um, 3222 Togo. Um, 3300 Radio Cultural, Radio Ryan, 3320. I mean, I used to look at lists of stations on the tropical bands wishing I could receive them back in the day. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's nice to nice to see this again. There's a lot, I mean, this isn't everything on the tropical band. This is basically those stations that have been received by people that have written in. And as you can see, from 2.3 to 5 megahertz, you know, there's been a lot, there's been a lot of receptions um, that have been reported. Um, so, what receiver? Um, interesting, Yesu FRG 8800, 639 pounds. Panasonic um, RFB 600 LBE. I'd seen pictures of this radio and thought it was great. 499 pounds back in the day. Icom R7000, 980 pounds. And actually, here we go. There's a again some information on the Yesu FRG 77. Uh, zero zero, three hundred and fifty pounds. So you know you could back in the day, it was tw the 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 eight eight zero zero was twice as expensive as the seven seven zero zero. Kenwood R two thousand, nearly six hundred pounds. Trio R one thousand, available on yeah. So these are I mean these were second hand at the time. And then there's the low HF one two five, um, three hundred and seventy five pounds. So that's really interesting. Uh, Eddie Stone, which you don't see many around now. Um, Model 1, 650. So yeah, so that was interesting. So what receiver? I think what they do is, that it was obviously tabletop communication receivers on this edition. I think they, they do, other editions will have portables. Um, and then a book service. And then, um, and then yeah, another advert for the ICF. 7,600 DS, 169 pounds, and again the 2001D, 329 pounds. Which I've seen in other adverts, they describe the 2001D as kind of like a premium portable. So um, you know there was the differentiation was there um, back in the uh, late 80s. So um, so yeah, and then and then the advertisement on the back, uh, Yesu, uh, they laughed when they saw my radio. Then they saw my logbook. So this is the FT seven four seven GX, which was very sort of compact transceiver, um, which I remember at the time. Um, wasn't really much interest to me, but um, I remember seeing this advert uh, and thinking it was quite clever. Now I look at it and I think it's a bit naff, but uh, you know, nearly thirty years ago. So anyway, so that's it. So that was Shortwave Magazine, June nineteen eighty eight. Um, an, an interesting glimpse into the world of shortwave listening before the end of the Cold War, or just before the end of the Cold War. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how things moved on 10 years later, which, you know, which I guess is, you know, that's basically after the golden age of shortwave, really. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If there are any articles that you want, um, I'm happy to take an image and send you a PDF uh, if you want anything in particular, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks for watching.